Well, I'm going to bring the first message. And I have chosen as my scripture Genesis, the 28th chapter and the 35th chapter. And the subject is Back to Bethel. When Jacob was a young man, he was running from Esau. And he stopped at a place and he made a pillar out of some rocks. He went to sleep and he had a dream. And he dreamed that there was a ladder stretched all the way from earth to heaven. And he saw on that ladder angels ascending and descending. And at the top of the ladder was none other than the Lord God, Jehovah. And the Lord spoke. And the Lord said, I am the God of your father Isaac and of your grandfather Abraham. I will be with you. I will bless you. I will make of your seed as the dust of the earth. You will go from this place to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. And every bit of this I will give to your descendants. And so when Jacob awakened from his sleep, he was frightened. And he said, surely this is the place of the Lord. The Lord is in this place. And he was astounded. And he took some oil. Yes. And he poured the oil on the rocks and he named that place Bethel. And he made a covenant with the Lord. And he said unto the Lord, Lord, of all that you give to me, I will give back unto you one tenth. I will give a tithe of all that you give to me. Now we go from the 28th chapter to the 35th chapter and many years have gone by David I mean uh, Jacob has returned to his homeland he is now married he has many children and the Lord comes to him and the Lord says to him I want you to go back to Bethel I want you to go back to Bethel I want you to go back to where you met God I want you to go back to where God became real in your life. I want you to take all your family, all of your servants. I want you to take everybody with you. And so Jacob got all of them together. And he told his family and he told his servants that they were going to Bethel. He said, now I want you to get rid of all the false gods. For we're going back to Bethel. And we're going to meet God. And God is going to become real to you. Just as he has become real to me. And this was the experience where God changed his name from Jacob to Israel. And ladies and gentlemen, it is my prayer. It is the prayer of my heart. That tonight in this service, tonight in this place, that we would return to Bethel. We need to go back to Bethel. We need to go back to where we met the Lord. We need to go back to where the Lord became real to us. But I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, and I want to tell you, young ladies and gentlemen, you can't go back to Bethel until you get rid of the false gods out of your life. There is no returning to Bethel as long as the false gods are in your life. Jeremiah called them no gods. And there are many no gods and false gods among our people. There is the no god and the false god of materialism. How many people worship at the god of materialism? There is the false god and the no god of gold. How many people worship money today? There is the false god and the no god of pleasure and amusements. And how many of our people worship these false gods? 
There is the false God and the no God of sports. And how many worship at the false God of sports? Ladies and gentlemen, these false gods have got to be gotten out of your life. I invite you to come to these false gods. You come to these false gods and you will find they have a bronze heart. They can feel nothing for you. You find when you come to these false gods that they have lead ears. They cannot hear your plea. They cannot hear your cry. They cannot hear your petition. They are deaf to your needs. And you find that they are blind. And they cannot see you when you're in tribulation. They cannot see you when you're in distress stress because they are blind and you find that they have feet that are made out of clay and they cannot move and they cannot come to your assistance and they cannot come to your aid and they cannot come to help you but oh ladies and gentlemen get rid of these false gods get them out of your life get them out of your life so you can return to Bethel so you can return to the place where you first met God where God was real to you where you remember where God was real and made himself real in your life oh ladies and gentlemen that's where you need to go back to you don't you need to stop living like you're living today so many of our members are living as if there was no God as if God did not exist as if God was not upon his throne but I tell you ladies and gentlemen he is he is He is. He knows. He watches you. He sees everything you do. You're not putting anything over on God. And I want to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, God knows whether you love him or not. God knows whether you serve him or not. God knows whether you care or not. We need a mighty force in this city to care about this city. We have a lost city that God has put upon our hearts. We have a lost city that God has brought here for us to reach with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we can only do this with concern. We can only do this with compassion. We can only do this with praying members. We can only do this when we realize that we are nothing. Without Jesus Christ, we are absolutely a big fat zero. And we must have Christ we must have Jesus we must have the power of God to enable us to accomplish the task that he has given us to perform it is too great for us it is too big for us it is impossible for us but with God nothing is impossible with God nothing is impossible Do you remember before you were saved? Do you remember how it was? Do you remember what the Lord did to you? Do you remember how the Lord came to you? Do you remember how the Lord rescued you? Do you remember how the Lord brought you up and brought you out? Do you remember how he set you free? Do you remember? You need to return to Bethel. You've forgotten. You've forgotten how sweet the Lord is. You've forgotten how good the Lord is. You've forgotten how kind He is. You have forgotten how loving He is. You have forgotten how gentle He is. You have forgotten how benevolent He is. You have forgotten His long suffering. You need to return to Bethel and renew your relationship with the Lord God Almighty. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord has all power. The Lord has all energy. He has all that we need. He is our source. He is our strength. He is our power. And we need Him. Look what's happening to us today. Look how men and women are conducting themselves. Look how men and women are acting. Look at the average church member. I can't see any difference between him and and the lost world. I can't see anything, any difference between him. He has compromised his influence away. Oh, he needs to return to Bethel. He needs to return to the place of repentance. He needs to return to the place of power and be renewed in the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what he needs. That's the great need of the church today. We are lethargal. We are, we are indifferent. We are unconcerned. We are impotent. We are without power. And we need the power of God to flow through us. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, there's a lost city out there. A city that needs to be witnessed to. A city that needs to be spoken to about the Lord Jesus Christ. Why are we so mute? Why are we so silent? 
Why do not we let them know how wonderful Jesus is? He has not changed. He is not sick. He has not gone anywhere. He is alive. He is alive. And he loves them. And he will save them. And he will redeem them. Oh, it's so wonderful to be saved. Hallelujah for the cross. Hallelujah for the deliverance of our Savior. Praise God. It's so wonderful to know Jesus Christ. It's so wonderful not to be alone. It's so wonderful to have the Lord. It's so wonderful to be able to lift your heart in prayer and know that He cares and know that He hears you and know that He answers your prayers. Ah, and the power of God is available to all of us who have been redeemed through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is available to us. Let us take advantage of our heritage. Let us take advantage of our position in Christ. God bless you and may this be a great, great night.